meet Nvidia's latest Goldilocks GPU, the RDX 5070 Ti, promising both budget-friendly pricing and solid frame rates. But can it truly nail 4K gaming? Time to find out. Starting with the design, the Gigabyte 5070 Ti keeps things understated and professional. Its matte black finish looks sleek, and the 100mm fan setup is all about quite efficient cooling. The back plate is loaded with vents for extra airflow, and the card feels solid in hand. Under the hood, you get 16 gigs of GDDR7 memory on a 256-bit bus, delivering 30% more bandwidth than GDDR6X to tackle 4K textures and AI workloads. This matches the VRAM of Nvidia's more expensive 4080 Super, but with Blackwell's redesigned streaming multiprocessors that unify FP32 in 32 operations for smoother rasterization and neural shader efficiency. The boost clock is 9% higher than last gen's 4070 Ti Super, and with PCIe 5.0 support and DLSS 4 powered by 5th gen Tensor cores. So it's pretty apparent that this card is clearly built for both current and next gen gaming. Now let's talk gaming performance. Starting with rasterization at 2K, at 2K in Cyberpunk 2077, the RTX 5070 Ti pulls ahead of both the 4070 Ti Super and the 7900 XT, claiming the top spot for FPS. Looking at the 16 game average, it maintains its lead, consistently outperforming its rivals and delivering premium performance without the flagship price. Compared to the 4070 Ti Super, you're getting about 7% more frames for a similar cost, while the slightly cheaper 7900XT just can't keep up in most titles. Pushing things to 4K, the 5070 Ti still continues to impress. In God of War Ragnarok, it matches the 4080 Super and 7900XTX, putting it right up there with the heavyweights. It leaves the 4070 Ti Super and 7900XT trailing behind, delivering noticeably higher frame rates. Across the 16-game 4K average, the 5070 Ti maintains its edge, coming in about 11% ahead of the 4070 Ti Super and 14% faster than the 7900XT. For its price, you're getting top-tier 4K gaming power. Now let's flip on ray tracing and see what happens. At 2K, the 5070Ti really flexes its muscles. At 2K in Alan Wake 2 with ray tracing, the RTX 5070Ti edges out the 4070Ti Super by a slim margin, while the 7900XT is left way behind delivering less than half the performance across six popular ray traced games at 2K. The 5070Ti is about 6% faster than the 4070Ti Super and more than double the speed of 7900XT. Moving up to 4K in Black Myth Wukong, the 5070Ti again leads the 4070Ti Super by around 7% and the 7900XT can barely keep up, trailing by a huge margin. On average, across six games at 4K, the 5070Ti keeps a solid 13% lead over the 4070Ti Super and leaves the 7900XT in the dust. And even Avatar, Frontiers of Pandora looks stunning at over 50 FPS. The only card that pulls ahead in these scenarios is the 4080 Super, but you'll pay a hefty premium for that extra 18% performance. Of course, this card isn't just for gaming. When it comes to productivity, the RTX 5070Ti shines in creative tasks, scoring about 8% higher than the 4070Ti Super in Premiere Pro and 7% better in Blender rendering. However, Blackwell's prioritization of AI workflows means the 4070Ti Super still leads in AI upscaling. So if your focus is video editing or 3D work, the 5070Ti is a great pick. But for AI-heavy tasks, the 4070Ti Super has the edge. Speaking of heat, the Gigabyte's cooling solution deserves a shout-out. The 5070Ti rarely creeps above 67 degrees Celsius, even under sustained load. The fans stay whisper quiet at full tilt never getting louder than 47 decibels. What's really impressive is the efficiency. The 5070Ti sips around 280 watts, making it noticeably cooler and quieter than the 7900XT, which not only draws more power, but also runs hotter and noisier for same performance. So what's the verdict? At its price, 5070Ti is the first card in years that makes 4K gaming and ray tracing genuinely attainable without emptying your wallet or blowing up your power bill. It's 30% faster than the 4070Ti where it matters and more efficient than AMD's 7900XT and only outpaced by more expensive cards like 4080 Super. So this is probably the best GPU buy of the year. So that's it for today guys. Leave your opinions in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more honest reviews. See you again.